Christian here, and let us go back to August 2nd when I made it to the B&O Railroad Museum on a little bit of a detour that was more like a seven hour detour on my way home from the Tennessee Valley Railroad Museum. The B&O Railroad Museum is also a Smithsonian Institute affiliate museum, so this makes it my second Smithsonian Museum. This museum has been on my list for a long time. There were really no formal plans until I decided to take my last adventure with the job I had for five years that I left in August for a better opportunity. I would say the three most famous locomotives at the museum has two of which are no longer on the property. One of them would be the Chesapeake and Ohio 614, which was restored by Ross Rowland in 1980 and ran on the Chessy Safety System Express between 1980 and 1981, performed the ACE 3000 test runs in 1985 and ran excursions in New Jersey between 1996 and 1998 and the infamous Chesapeake and Ohio 1309 which is currently in its final stages of its rebuild and return to service at the Western Maryland Scenic Railroad following a multi-year rebuild which started in 2014. The most famous piece of equipment on the property would have to be the American Freedom Train 1, also known as the Reading 2101. The Reading 2101 was originally built as a consolidation type steam locomotive in the 1920s by the Baldwin Locomotive Works. And in the 40s, due to wartime restrictions, the Reading Railroad rebuilt a few consolidation type steam locomotives into the famed Reading T1 class. Now the 2101 is one of the four surviving T1 steam locomotives. In the 70s, when Ross Rowland was looking for another steam locomotive for the American Freedom Train, he restored the 2101 in 30 days to pull the American Freedom Train on the eastern side of the country. After the American Freedom Train, it would go on to pull the Chessy Safety System Express in the late 1970s. However, its excursion career was unfortunately cut short due to a roundhouse fire in 1979 in which she was severely damaged. In my personal opinion, she could definitely use a cosmetic job.
As we go into the roundhouse, I'm going to apologize. The volume at many different places is spotty, and that is because of many different factors, but the biggest of which was copyrighted music, and I didn't want this video to get dinged, because if you're a YouTube creator, you understand the fact that if there's copyrighted music in it, you get dinged by YouTube, and obviously, you don't get to monetize this video. So I cut out pretty much 90% of the audio in the B&O roundhouse. The B&O Roundhouse is the former Mount Clair Station and Engine Shops, which was constructed in 1829. Inside the roundhouse, I was going to do a fancy overdub about the history of each locomotive and then I ran out of time editing this video if I wanted it to be up by Friday. <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of other video editors can understand that. Currently in the B&O Roundhouse, the one thing that changed when I was there was they had a graffiti caboose, which I thought was pretty awesome on the turntable inside the roundhouse. That has since been moved to my understanding. Inside the roundhouse, they have the largest collection of Civil War steam locomotives and pre-Civil War steam locomotives dating back to the early days of the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad. Some of these are replicas, some of these are original. For example, they have the Clinchfield 1, CNJ 592, which is the only other surviving CNJ steam locomotive, Shea 1, which was traded for the Western Maryland 6, the William Mason, which was restored in the 90s and was in a movie I saw as a kid, Wild Wild West, 147, the first 10-wheeler built for the B&O Railroad Museum, 348, 545, 600, and 305.
Inside the second building, they had the 490, which was the first non-Burlington route surviving Hudson I have seen. They had the CNO 377, which a friend of mine really wanted to, me to get a few shots of because he was really interested in the locomotive. They have the only surviving Baltimore and Ohio Mikado type steam locomotive, the 4500. They have a Pacific type B&O steam locomotive, the President Washington, which is the 5300.
And of course, right next to that, they had the other surviving Chesapeake and Ohio Allegheny type steam locomotive, 1604. Interesting note, in 2019, I saw 1601. This year, I've seen 1308, 1604 out of the surviving CNO articulates. And hopefully soon, I can complete that with 1309, which is scheduled to debut at the Western Railroad and Scenic Railroad towards the end of this year. So that is it for the B&O Railroad Museum. Just a few things I hope you all enjoyed. I do apologize if the audio in a few spots was patchy. Again, I had to cut it because of copyright reasons. And yeah, I didn't want copyrighted music in my video. And getting dinged, so I did the best I could. I also do want to apologize because I did try to make this museum video a lot more stable. Because I do know sometimes... Especially with this new 4K camera, it isn't the stablest at a museum, but I think it was a decent enough video, and I hope you all enjoy, and stay tuned. We're moving on to more static steam locomotives. <laughs>